All right, um, just looking at our art kit here that we have for class, and I want to talk to you about some of the materials that we have. Um, as we get a little bit closer here, uh, our painting kit. Um, these are our watercolors, and you can see that um, we do have a color right here that is really similar to uh, one of the videos that we watch, the color called cyan. And then we also have this pink is maybe a little bit on the magenta scale. Um, and then we have our traditional red, yellow, blue. Um, and so those are some of the main colors that we might use. And these are watercolors. So watercolors means that it's a, it's a solid pigment. Um, this material is a pigment. So you can pop these out. And it's basically like a piece of chalk. Um, and that powdered pigment has been compressed together and it will come off if you add water to it. I know that sounds obvious, but when we talk about paint, we're talking about pigments that are being carried by other materials. So a watercolor is a pigment that's being carried by water. Um, looking at the other paints that were part of our kit, um, it's an interesting selection of colors. Um, and when I say interesting, I mean I'm not sure uh, how they chose these colors for us, but this is a inexpensive Chinese art kit. So we get what we get. Um, so the colors that they included here, um, we have a thalo blue. And when, when it says thalo, it means um, the material that used it is called theocyanine. And so their pigment is coming from a mineral called thalocyanine. And um, that's what makes that blue. It's a deep um, blue but when you mix it with a bright yellow, you can make like almost a fluorescent green. So it's a, we call it like an electric blue. It's quite um, intense. Um, some of the other ones that are here, um, vermilion is our orange. Um, this is called scarlet, the red. Some of these don't tell us what they were made with. Um, this yellow ochre is the word that tells you what that was made with. Ochre is a material. And then this yellow, let me see here, if I can read that. Um, I cannot really read that, but if I, if I do read it, I'll let you know what it says. And then we have our black. So uh, this one says viridian green and then titanium white. And the titanium white is actually made with the metal titanium. And that's what they use to make a lot of white pigments. Before titanium, they used lead and lead is poisonous. So we're glad they don't use lead anymore. All right, um, this is our palette. Um, obviously these little wells can hold uh, water and this might be a place where you would be able to mix your colors or mix your color with water to get the consistency that you want. So as we start to work with paint, we're gonna be using water and we'll use our palette. And then let's look at our brushes here. So here's our selection of brushes. And these are all what you call round brushes. And you can see that they're all different sizes. So when these are um, showing correctly, you can see that they all have sizes uh, showing the numbers. So we see a number for each of these. And these are standardized numbers that all brushes have. So if you tell someone that you're using a number seven round, um, they should know what size brush you're talking about. And the, st the seven might be, um, in millimeters or something or it could just be an arbitrary number that people understand as brush sizes so uh, so these are all round uh, which means that the ferrule this this uh, metal part has not been flattened so a flat brush i'm going to grab i have some with me here i'm going to just pause the video and then we'll show some flats all right so here's a flat brush and you can see that the ferrule compared to the other ones has been flattened. So it's kind of been pinched and it creates a brush that is kind of like a traditional paintbrush that most people think of. And that flat brush is better for different types of strokes. So a, a round brush is more like for calligraphy type strokes and a flat brush is more for like impressionistic, flat, blocky, um, or for doing large, areas of coverage um, and you can see that in this little selection of brushes that I have here I have both flats and rounds mixed together um, here's all the rounds on the left and all the flats on the right 
and those brushes um, would give you a good variety for doing a small painting.